And anything that Jesus did, and while he was feeding the multitude, he paid particular attention to them issuing out the food and collecting and gathering the food. He didn't leave it laying on the ground. After he had fed the 5,000, he told the disciples, go back and gather. I don't know whether you know it or not, but it's sinful for us to waste God's resources. Yeah. Too many times, y'all ain't gonna like me, too many times people who don't necessarily have to pay for stuff don't have a problem throwing away stuff. Well, y'all ain't helping me here. What, 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 what's important is you got to trust God to the ability that if you want to pull yourself up out of your dungeon and up out of your pit, you got to pay particular attention to what you have. Well, Use what God gives you. Exercise it expeditiously to the degree that don't throw it away. Don't waste it. Don't waste time. Don't waste opportunity. And don't waste resources. Mm -hmm. Can I talk to you? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll start there. It's interesting. One of the books that Paul writes. And it's quite a lengthy book. And he deals with a lot of weighted matter. When it comes to the believer, when you start talking about the church at Corinth. Amen. Church at Corinth started out being a blessed church. It was a big church. It had a lot of things going on. And Paul spent a lot of time teaching doctrine and sending out correction. Help me say correction. Correct. Corinth was a wealthy commercial center located on a narrow uh, 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 infamous uh, to the degree that it was somewhere near northern Greece and near Asia. The wealth of Corinth was acquired by hauling freight and small vessels across this isthmus and was levying tolls on such commerce. Mm -hmm. Please know that anytime you live in a coastal area, that's going to be a profit to be made because people use that in exchange for currency. Most people like to live by water. Say amen. amen. That's a pricey piece of real estate. When you're down by some water, say amen. amen. Uh -huh. But it was known for the cosmopolitan culture and the luxurious temples. The temples were such that they, they spent a lot of money on the synagogues and the temples. But it's interesting to know this, that even though Corinthian church was a big church and Corinth was a profitable city, it was a city suffering from moral decay. Anytime you start dealing with people with prosperity, and I'm going to preach to you, and I don't want you to push me, but if you push me, I'm going to push you back. Anytime you deal with people with moral decay, when you deal with people who don't have the problems they used to, they tend to sit on the sidelines of life. They no longer cry. They no longer hurt for God. They no longer seek Him. They don't come early. They don't stay late. They just kind of just find their way when and if they can. Oh, but there was a time where when we were really in need that we cried unto the God of our salvation. Amen. Early in the morning, late in the midnight hour, we cried unto Him. We walked the floor. We we praised him while we were washing dishes. We praised him while we were even washing clothes with our own hands. The rub on. Y'all know what I'm saying. When we were out there on the clothesline trying to take them in while the wind was about to usher in a storm. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Now that we have a, a stack, a stack of uh, uh, washing machine and dryer, I might see you every so often. Look at your neighbor. The neighbor, is he talking to you? The moral decay of Corinth was legendary to the extent that it was filled with this. Watch this. Y'all ain't going to like me again. It reflected a spiritual need in the city. And it was known for a seaman's paradise and a moral cesspool. Here it is. It says, Corinthian church was full. The city, the city, not the church, the city of Corinth was full of easy women roaming in the streets. No, I didn't feel like you were going to say much. Oh, but when you got easy women coming up and down Temple Avenue, some of the deacons can't keep their mind on nothing but looking out the door. I am reminded of a deacon and the preacher. Uh, the preacher was preaching and said, he said to, to the congregation, he said, I'm sick and tired of all these drinkers. I'm sick and tired of all the drunks. He said unto him, well, if I had my way, I would take all the alcohol in this whole town, take it down.
down to the river and dump it all well. in the river. Mm -hmm. After he preached this extenuating long service, he said, Deacon, stand up. We're about to open the doors of the church. What opened him when we sang to gather the people? The deacon said, I believe we should sing, shall we gather at the river? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is everybody living in here, everybody sitting in this occupied place, sometimes their mind is not where it needs to be. Yeah. Corinth was, was, was filled with women, easy women walking the streets. The atmosphere was polluted with alluring aura of sin. Mm -hmm. It ain't just the woman doing wrong, it's the man that's always polluting it as well, say man. Amen. But when the people of God stop dealing with the ungodliness and return back to God, he will forgive, say man. The city may furnish some of the background for the catalog of man, sins, and Romans. Romans talks about that. But talking about Corinth, we need to move our place in God to a new level. I just spoke to you about five more Sundays. I ain't, gonna, I ain't even got time to check off your attendance for the last 39 or 40 some Sundays. Out, but you know who you are. You know what God is saying to you. You know where God has brought you from. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9 and verse 10, talking about grace. Help me say grace. grace. Grace has a way of undressing us. When we're proud, it has a way of reminding us what he's done for us. He ha it has a way of making us humble when we have a tendency to look down our nose at somebody else. Whatever I have to say to you today, I pray that it falls on good ears. It falls on a soft heart. It falls on a person who can come to the recognition that the Lord is God. And beside him there is no one. Verse 9 says, For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. The epistle of Corinth was written by Paul the Apostle. Out of the 26 books in the New Testament, Paul wrote 16, 17 of those epistles. But he himself says, admittedly, that I am the least of the apostles. Let me take the back seat. Let me go to the end of the line. Let me let everybody else get in front of me. Because when I look back over my life, and I start understanding what God had to do to get me to where I am today. Let me stand off in a corner somewhere and let my head shake. We just did it in Bible study. The, 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 the Pharisee and the publican, the Pharisee comes up. You know how we do when we've been in church. The Pharisee said, Father, I thank thee that I'm not like all other men in the church, all other women. You know, I don't wear my clothes like they wear their clothes. I get my hair fixed twice a week. My nails is done. Praise the Lord, everybody. I wave my hands go when I come in here. And I'm so saved. Say, man. Uh, but, but he said, I bad twice a week. I give up all my money. I do all the necessary things. But the publican, the Bible says, would not even in the church hold up his head toward the cross. Well, he would not even exhort himself to say what he did good. Well, and the Bible says that the Lord said that man went down greater than the Pharisee. What, what does that lesson teach us? That lesson teaches us that don't, don't, you don't have to tell people who you are. You don't have to tell people what you've done. You don't have to tell people what you possess. They can see it. But make sure you exhibit godliness. Amen. In the midst of your Cadillac. In the midst of your Lexus. Hell, somebody in the midst of your Hummer. In the midst of whatever it is. Because you come from a hoop to do. At some point, you had some. That oh God, the hood wouldn't stay down. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You had some that the electric window wouldn't work and the radio would come on whenever it felt like it. Depending on if you hit the railroad track the right way, it would pop on. You you ain't been all that. You ain't always had your hair straight like that with color on the tip. You ain't always had your finger there. Child, you was in a kitchen somewhere. Y'all better talk to me. Now you were pushing a buggy and holiday in on the third floor. Don't act like you're all that now. Come on, somebody. But God brought you. Help me 
grace is. I do have something that I need you to pay particular attention to as I hurry along. The notion of God's love, which is through grace, coming to us free of charge. Hear this. The notion of God's love coming to us free of charge with no strings attached seems to be against every instinct of humanity. I just, most of us, we when we walk in carnality or we walk in just humanity, I just don't believe somebody's going to do something for me without some strings attached. I don't know whether y'all are young ladies or not, but when you're about 14, 15, 16, breathe, and they start texting you, and they start asking you for your phone number, and start telling you everything you want to hear. I ain't got time to go no further. You'll pick it up as you come along. Say, man, somebody. But anytime you enter into agreement with some people, and the issue of life is too good to be true, by today's standards, it possibly is. So what I said was the notion of God's love coming to us free of charge with no strings attached seemed to be against every instinct of humanity. The problem we have in some instances when it comes to dealing with God, we have to be made to feel like we earned God's favor. Y'all bear with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 8 it says I speak not by commandment but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love verse 9 is where I am I pray you read with me I pray that you don't worry about the aroma that's flowing from the back worry about the aroma that's flowing from the top come on son no, no, don't, don't worry about the greens and things. Don't worry about the bread. Oh, come on, the cobbler and all that. Put that on. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 9 said, For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor. That you may through his poverty what? Might become rich. We always see rich R I C H as being wealth and money. But there's so much more to this text or the context of it to the extent that you need to understand when God says that the Lord Jesus, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich, rich in mercy, rich in availability, rich in opportunity, rich in finding your new purpose. Come on, somebody. God ain't just in the business of just sending you no check. He's in the business of trying to train you to prepare you that when the check does come, you're going to know what to do with it. The first thing I'm going to do is go down there to Southtown Hyundai. I'm going to go down there and get rid of this. I'm going to go down there and get rid of that. Neighbor, don't worry about that. Be prepared for what your new purpose is in God. Yeah. Though our grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake. It, 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 it does concern me when people start being too nice to you. When, when folks start being too nice, what they want. If I were to, uh, uh, out of the ordinary, start bringing flowers home to Sister Newton and lavishing her with all this stuff, I don't know whether y'all know it or not, but the human instinct don't kick in. Chocolate on Wednesday. Dinner on Thursday. At some point, the human side of Sister New goes, hold on, hold on, hold on, before we go anywhere. <laughs> what y'all ain't? <laughs> I ain't calling the roses. I put them out so all my co-workers could see it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I ain't calling the chocolates. Y'all know how some of them, you can tell whether they're cheap chocolates or good chocolates. These kind of sisters, they're going to go 
watching it, y'all. You know. And it got a little jelly in it. They're going to leave it in there. But after, after that third exhibit of love, she don't do what are you doing? Some of us get nervous when it comes to blessing. Some of us start questioning how and why. Can I get a witness? But he became rich for my sake. I mean, he became poor for my sake. That I might become rich. That's why I'm glad when I come to the house of worship. That's why I'm glad when I, 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 I get disappointed sometimes when you cut off praise and worship too soon. I need a little bit more of that. Y'all ain't saying that. I, I want to be in the glory of the presence of the living God. Y'all don't know where I come from. Y'all don't know what I have. Please 
ready to bring you on this flight. Glad to have you. Welcome to Orlando. Welcome to Atlanta. We need to touch down. They're already welcoming us to the town. Say amen. <laughs> One last scripture, and I'm going to take you home. Second Corinthians chapter 20. Glad to have those of you who have fellowship for, with us for the first time. We are people of God who are sent by God to shed light in dark places. I am an anointed vessel of God to patrol me. Huh. Brother, ain't, ain't too many of us real foot soldiers out here. No more. Man, he drove some of these folks, man, you don't know what you get nowadays. Talk to me. They one way in the daytime, they another way at night, yeah. Huh? All this empire and all this scandal and all this kind of stuff. They joke about it, Billy, look good and all that kind of stuff, man. He's doing curls. I wish I had, I mean, I wish my shoulder were like this and all that, but man, he's sitting in somebody else's lap. Oh my God! <laughs> That ain't for you. I said, that ain't for you, that ain't for you, that ain't for you. I know, I know I'm finna put myself out here. We ain't gonna tweet that part. We're gonna tweet some other part. That ain't for nobody up in here. Look at somebody and say, get yourself together. Get yourself together. In that middle seat, oh, oh. <laughs> Group seven was pretty low. And everybody trying to push. So the new, she right down, she right down and look, check date, check this with her bag and this and that. Always telling me to load on one of her carry on. So the new. $25. We got to drag it all the way from the check and terminal, all the way to Concord D, all the way up the steps, and all that. I'm her husband. She can... Don't tell her I said nothing. But we going to get C3. And you will think when you come out the elevator, C3 is going to be right there. It's C30 right here in front of you. You got to walk all the way down. Okay, uh, zone seven, you're free to go. Everybody pushing and shoving, trying to get in zone seven. What you pushing and shoving for? To line it from here to Brother Jerry, uh, barbecue grill, and all you do want to check the thing, we're going to come right here and stand right here. Ain't no, ain't no rush. You ever see that? Hey, 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 ain't no way you going. Not that quick. I don't got to a point where I was, man, y'all go on. It don't mean nothing. <laughs> but then when you get to your row, B30. Oh, yeah. 
Jeff and me talking again. You want to have one wreck that you live to talk about. I done been down to one. I had one scary coming in Charlotte not long ago, American Airlines. And we were down, and I couldn't see the runway. And I, that, that was going to help. I don't know whether it would or not. I needed to see it. But we did touch down, and we touched down kind of hard, Maurice. And when we touched down, you know, rather than it bring you down and We came down. <laughs> and rather than stabilizing it, he hit the throttle and took back off and went back up in the air. <laughs> True story. It was a white guy pretty about my size. My choice, he wanna be. When that thing hit the ground and bounced like a Wilson basketball and went back in the air, he looked right at me. <laughs> and I looked right back at him. What is going on? Finally, we circled the runway once again. I said, Father, I stretch my hand. Anybody ever been in a situation like that? Father, I stretch my hand. You, you'd be surprised when you get in a bad situation how your life flashes through your face. Flash through your mind, say amen. And you start asking yourself, have I done all I can do? I don't know whether this is going to be it or not. Finally, we come back in there. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Father, 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 Father. <laughs> That's a good feeling when, it, when at, at least at least you know it's on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And I lift my voice to you. Oh God, seven, seven Corinthians. We going home after this chapter twelve. Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse five. Of such a one would I glory, yet of myself I would not glory, but in my, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say to the truth, but now I will forbear. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. Or that he heareth me. Paul is struggling with the mere fact that come greatness becomes a badge of accountability. The more God blesses you, the more accountable to meekness and service you become. I, I'm, I'm misconstrued by people who walk in arrogance to the degree that folks supposed to serve you. I, I, I mean, I know what my role is as a pastor and as a bishop, but don't get beside yourself to the degree that people got to feed me grapes and fan me and talk me around like I'm a king somewhere. Say amen. Paul said, I, I have become one of the chief apostles. I'm writing the letters to these New Testament churches, but I'm not going to glory who I am. That I'm struggling with my remembrance of what God had to do to get me free. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Though I desire the glory, I should not be a fool. Too many times we get, we get a little money in a little sack. We get a job where we get promoted, deserved or undeserved. Uh, we get, we get uh, beside ourselves with a debit card, a credit card, or whatever it is. And it looks like then you're not inspired by Bible study any longer. You don't believe Sunday school works any longer. Say amen. He said, for though I would desire the glory, I shall not be a fool. Verse 7 said, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me. Y'all stay with me. That was given to me a thorn in the flesh. I'm speaking to somebody who's going through something. 
David says it was good for me that I might be afflicted. And I was afflicted. Sometimes when the Lord loves you, he wants to bring the best out of you. Just like a coach who sees some promise in you, he tell me, you give me two more baseline foul lines. I know he's trying to single you out. Don't feel like God is singling you out. He just got greater promises for you, beloved. Can I talk to somebody? Don't worry about what the rest of the believers are doing. Don't worry about what the rest of the members going to bring. You go above and beyond the call of duty. That I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Every so often I have to come back down to earth. Every so often in the midst of my sun, in the midst of my shine, in the midst of my blessing, in the midst of my gift, look good on me. God has a way of bringing me back to my reality. God has a way of causing me to pray early in the morning. God has a way of causing me to walk in new humility. God has a way of having the issue of me bring new mercy. I know you see me as being this. I know some of us, we see them as being this or that. And I wish I could arrive to that status. Sometimes you don't know what they're going through. Sometimes you don't know how they got to climbing up the rough side of the mountain. Oh, but I got to go, beloved, because I feel the pot bubbling up on the inside. Not the greens, not the poking beans, but the power of God. Somebody help me say the power of God. Verse 8 says, this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. I asked him to keep me. I asked him to stand with me. I asked him to hold me. When I'm being tempted and tried, I ask him to hold me when I'm up and hold me when I'm down. Ask him to hold me when they love me. Ask him to hold me when they hate me. I know that he has buffeted me and exalted me above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord that it might depart from me. But sometimes the Lord want to use you as a public example of what a praise and worship leader should look like. You don't know what I've been through. I just cried my tears in the bathroom. But God is worthy of my praise. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I was down here working the other day. And some kind of way of all times in my life. Never happened before. My ladder is on my truck. I'm pulling a rake out the ladder. Trying to do the business of the kingdom of the living God. And the ladder leg hit me right in my eye. in my eye. So this ain't from Sister Duke. This is, this is from the ladder. <laughs> had to hurry up and go get me some deals for it. I looked at it. I said, oh God. Y'all ever been hit from the blind side? Some ever hit you and hurt you that you didn't see coming? Y'all ain't got that. I need a worshiper here. Yeah. I need somebody who know what it feel like to be in pain. I know what it feel like. I need somebody who know what it feel like to be carrying burdens and carrying hurt, but I just don't let y'all know I'm carrying. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. He says, verse, here it is, verse 9 said, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient. I'm praying, Lord, help me. Lord, pull me up. Lord, bring me out. Lord, make a way. Lord, don't let him hurt me. Lord, don't let him leave me. But he said, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. You know me. I had to go to my list of stuff. When I go to my list of stuff, I'm going to let my, I'm going to let my hell out with you. Because he said, when he said, his grace is sufficient for you. I'm going to say, Grace. Grace gives my achievement. I have achievements over my aches. Help me say grace. Grace Grace blessings for my burdens. Help me say grace. Grace. Is my conqueror for my calamities. Is my dominion over my debts and my doubts. Y'all got to get on point. Get on point. Get on point. Help me say grace. Grace. 
fulfill me for my failure. Praise over my greed. Praise godliness over my grudges. Praise help for my hurts. Praise inspiration over my issues. Praise justified for my junk. Kindness for my catastrophe. Protection over my problems. Over my pain, triumph over my trial, strength over my struggles, love over my lack, worship for my worries. Can I talk to somebody? Glory for my guilt, gospel for my gossip, goodness for my gutter, mercy for my mess, hope for my tribulation, salvation for my suffering, deliverance for my despair, prosperity for my Oh, my God. 
of the Lord, won't you? Won't you start all over? He's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of the Lord. Jesus. Come on, Clemma. I know Grace told me to warn you. 
right, the rest of the family will evolve. 25 years old. And some of us are crying buckets of tears because it was senseless that the promises of God had not even yet been fulfilled. Pray over your sons, your nephews, your brother, your cousin, next door neighbor, whoever it is, pray for him, even when he ain't praying for himself. But I pray for those who are struggling with grief in the aftermath of tragedy. Over a thousand bodies have not been accounted for in California. You ain't got no reason to be upset. You ain't got no reason to be sad. You ain't got no reason to be mad. Let the glory of the Lord rise upon us. God, we pray over every young man, every young lady out of the ark of sin. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for all that you're going to do in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is love. Oh, three people, we're going home. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand where you are. Praise the Lord. Come on, Paul, you're strong. Stay where you are. I don't mind. We're going next door. Hope you don't mind. Hold it, hold it. I had to press pause. Help me. Thanksgiving. Let us love on one another and appreciate life. Yeah. You gave it to us. 